All right, let's get started. Um, we'll have the stragglers come in as time progresses. Welcome everybody to my talk. I'll just kick off the demo here um, and switch to slides and then we'll come back to the demo when it becomes relevant. My talk today is about uh, a particular tool known as uh, KPAC. So, um, anybody familiar with KPAC in the audience yet? No? Okay, good. One or two hands, that's always good. Um, I provide a, a rather, I'll start at a rather introductory level uh, to KPAC and then um, we'll build on um, as the session goes. A little bit about myself, I am the Chief Evangelist at the Cloud Foundry Foundation. What that means is uh, I get to present all of these cool stuff that uh, the community has built um, while collecting a bunch of free t-shirts. Um, but why I also decided to give this presentation is there's always a relentless pursuit of automation within the larger DevOps community and um, within the Kubernetes community in particular. And uh, there's this, um, there's these two areas of uh, build automation and supply chain security that um, KPAC provides an excellent answer to. And I thought I'd focus uh, much of this presentation on these aspects of uh, KPAC. Um, like I said, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, KPAC as a tool um, to as much of the audience as possible. There's also a lot of work that the OpenSSF is doing. Um, again, show of hands, do folks know the OpenSSF at all? Yes, no, maybe. Um, so I just thought I'll quickly introduce some of the work that they're doing um, and you know put that in context um, with what Kubernetes build automation has to do um, with security and things like that. I thought I'll um, also give a quick shout out to the first keynote that we had um, earlier today. Um, it talked about engineering scalability and how you can get your engineers to work more, work better, and continue to make a case for repeatable engineering work without all of the trouble that comes along with it. And so uh, a, a large part of this presentation is going to follow the same theme. And I thought I'll just do a quick shout out to um, the message from one of the earlier keynotes. So KPAC. KPAC is defined as a Kubernetes build automation tool. Uh, it runs natively on Kubernetes and helps people generate OCI compatible container images out of source code that they might have. So if you're already using a Docker build command as the first step of your process, then use of KPAC is an alternative to a Docker build. Now there's about half a dozen reasons I can think of why somebody should use KPAC versus use Docker build. Um, but it will become very apparent as we go through the presentation and things like that. But if you're using privileged containers, for example, and um, you have to run a different Docker build version um, for your staging versus your test versus your local and things like that, um, then all of those are good reasons to ditch um, Docker build in favor of KPAC. So it provides a very parameterless, uh, repeatable way of building these containers. and these containers are built natively on Kubernetes. So if you have Kubernetes-based infrastructure and you're taking advantage of Kubernetes for your applications and reliability and all of these things, then I think it's also easy to just make use of the same advantages at a container build level as well. Um, we covered that. And um, one of the other reasons I love uh, KPAC is because at its heart, it allows or it enables a Git-based automation to uh, be set up. So if you, if you really love this notion of GitOps and you want to get in on the GitOps bandwagon some form or manner, uh, KPAC allows you to do that very easily because KPAC basically 
is designed to work in either a pull manner where it will go and pull your git repos for the latest revisions or you can trigger a kpack build every time you update um, git repositories as well. So you can pass along that uh, git hash along with the URL and kpack is capable of generating a build. Uh, we'll take a look at how it does that. And um, a lot of the kpack architecture is designed around declarative files. So if you love YAML engineering, kpack is the tool for you. Um, and if you feel that uh, you were missing YAML early on, early enough in the build process, then um, you know um, kpack makes it happen. And so um, all of these things combined make it one of the best ways you can go from uh, code to container um, for your clusters. And that's really you know the whole raft of things that I like about uh, kpack that that really make it uh, worthwhile for me. Um, let me quickly show you some of these in action. And I think it's only fair that in the advanced track we take a look at some YAML as soon as possible. So, uh, So in this folder, uh, which I'm just using to um, store some YAML files for purposes of this demo, uh, I have all the constituents of the kpack um, tool. Um, so like I mentioned, kpack, uh, kpack works with a handful of YAML files. Um, and kpack takes what is known as a service account. Um, so it's the typical Kubernetes service account. And then you make use of it within kpack in order for kpack to be able to output to a container registry. So um, I think everybody is familiar with the build paradigm where you have source code, you create a container or an image out of it, and then you upload this image to a container registry, and then you deploy from that container registry to your um, production container runtime, whatever it might be. Uh, considering that you're here, it's probably Kubernetes and um, something that's running there, but um, that's the same colophon that kpack follows. So kpack takes care of the life cycle between the time you supply code to it and putting something on a container registry um, in the form of an OCI image. And so um, that life cycle is handed through a combination of um, YAML files that give the definition of the tool itself. And the first step going there is to create a service account. Now, um, KPAC takes this notion of what is known as a builder, and this builder is divided into two pieces, uh, a cluster, a stack, and a store. Let's think of it that way. Um, KPAC internally makes use of uh, cloud native build packs. Anybody heard of cloud native build packs at all? Yeah, great. So cloud native build packs is a CNCF project. Um, KPAC is a part of uh, the build packs org for about six months now. Uh, and so KPACs consume uh, cloud native build packs. Uh, cloud native build packs are essentially um, an evolution of build packs that were available back in the Heroku days. I mean, they still are available in Heroku and Cloud Foundry and all of these tools. But now they've evolved to export OCI compatible container images. They did not do that before. Um, they had uh, the ability to import certain immutable artifacts that were specific to either the Heroku ecosystem or the Cloud Foundry ecosystem, whereas uh, now the project has taken on a sort of new uh, form where instead of uh, creating an artifact that will run in either of these sort of closed ecosystems, it will instead run, uh, it will instead generate uh, an OCI compatible image that you can run on um, uh, pretty much any <laughs> container runtime. Um, the builder uh, that kpack uses here references to two build packs in particular. So if you look closer to the bottom, 
um, you have a Java build pack and you have a Node.js build pack. Now, obviously, this can contain more build packs. Um, so you could have PHP build packs, you could have Rust build packs, you could have whatever it is that you want. Uh, but for purposes of this demo, we just uh, it's just limited to two. Um, there's also this thing called the stack. Uh, and what the stack means is it is the base image that it will use as part of the build process that it does. And it will also supply a base image layer to what is known as the run image, which will actually be run um, inside the container. Um, there's also a store um, that kpack references. So you remember that Java build pack and Node.js build pack I talked about. So the store is basically a list of all different build packs that are contained for reference by kpack. And if you wanted to add more build packs uh, to kpack in order to build more language families and um, other um, as written in other languages, you basically add to this. Um, so when you install kpack, you install uh, all of these YAMLs one after the other. And then that's how kpack effectively gets installed to any um, Kubernetes cluster that you might have. So in this example, uh, we have a kpack running. Um, let's see if I can so I'm using K9s to connect uh, to a local Kubernetes cluster in this case, and um, these are the two um, these are the two CRDs that uh, these are the two pods basically that reference KPAC. Um, so if I had to describe this, then you can uh, you can see all of that information gets applied here, and um, This is the KPAC control plane that will reference all of those um, all of those build packs and other things um, here. Now, um, let's see. So it, it, it's it's basically a very simple um, thing to do. So on your Kubernetes cluster, uh, whether it's local or whether it's remote, you can install KPAC and have it create all of these images as you go along. Um, yeah, internally they use build packs. And um, one of the things I like about KPAC is all of the native integrations that it comes with for a lot of the supply chain security work that um, I've recently discovered. Um, I have always uh, been an engineer, which means I don't care about security or I don't know if that's fair to say. Hopefully my manager is not watching, but uh, I've never been one to pay attention to security from the get go. And uh, that attitude is kind of changing with a lot of the recent uh, supply chain attacks and things like that. But what is facilitating a large part of the change is how many of these aspects that KPAC comes with uh, support for. Uh, now I wanted to highlight uh, the OpenSSF a little bit. So this is Honk, the OpenSSF mascot. Uh, the OpenSSF or the Open Source so Software Security Foundation, I, I think that's right. Um, they have uh, a mobilization plan that goes into 10 streams of investment. So among these 10 streams, um, they advocate the use of uh, S-bombs, they advocate the use of digital signatures, and they advocate creating more secure and more isolated build environments. And so those are three areas where I was performing a bunch of experiments over the summer. And I noticed that of all the tools that were available, um, KPAC was one of the more convenient ones to apply these principles. Now, some of these uh, principles also include building more trust along uh, build pipelines. If people are aware of the CNCF tags, which is how they organize a lot of the um, work that goes on uh, in different areas. So there's a tag supply chain security within the CNCF who published a reference white paper on here's how you do supply chain security when you work with CNCF projects. 
And that tag also uh, published what is known as Fresca. So F-R-S-C-A, which was a reference architecture using various CNCF projects to basically build uh, a way in which you can do repeatable builds of software artifacts, we basically repeatably create container images that, that are also signed and that are um, that are slightly more secure than like regular container images. And so um, I took that same reference architecture, but then I tried to apply different tools to it while preserving the same principles. And so the first thing that I hit upon was uh, generating S-bombs. Now, when you use build packs, the specification dictates that every single build that makes use of build packs generate as bombs automatically. So it's a part of the spec. And so if you're in the business of creating containers and you want to know what's inside your container, but then you don't really want to do a lot of extra work in exposing what's inside your container, then uh, build packs through KPack um, provide this uh, provide this manner to export as bombs uh, that's uh, in, a, in, a, in a very native fashion. So when you use KPack, because of the use of build packs, you get as bombs for free basically. The other area where uh, a lot of effort has gone into highlighting is what is known as Salsa. So Salsa advocates security levels for software artifacts. So there are a lot of areas that are involved when you create a container image or any software artifact in general. And so um, Salsa levels are meant as guidelines for helping secure each of these individually. So there's different best practices that you have to adhere to when you do um, coding, for example. There's different uh, practices you can adhere to when you're doing um, deploys, for example. And then there's different things for the build uh, phase of things. And so Salsa governs a lot of these different areas. Um, a lot of it is um, based on different uh, build practices that happened at Google, open source later, and a lot of uh, different members from the community came together to improve it. And uh, you can check uh, their website out. So the project website is salsa.dev, um, and you can, uh, you can learn more about the project. You can contribute in terms of uh, security protocols and best practices, if that's your wheelhouse. Um, and they, they, they basically put out information about um, how to design your build infrastructure in order to get uh, more secure and things like that. Um, the other thing that I uh, toyed around when using KPAC and I was really happy about was its native integration for uh, cosine. So users of six store projects here, cosine, people aware of what they are good. So um, cosine is uh, basically a what is known as a six store project. Um, six store is a collection of projects that basically exists in order to build more uh, trust and verify identity around container images. So it, the, the goal of Six store projects collectively is to enable um, people to au verify authentically about who built a particular image. So if you're in the business of doing a lot of image builds and you want your you want consumers of these images to verify your identity with it, then uh, the six store family of projects, particularly cosine, is very useful. And there's native integration for um, Cosine within the KPAC ecosystem, which made it another uh, reason uh, why it's a great choice for uh, doing builds. Um, this is an example of uh, the build packs architecture. So I'm making use of uh, Paketo uh, build packs. So Paketo is a family of build packs that's open source available for uh, production grade workflows. Uh, we know tons of people who are using this in production. Um, so uh, this demo consists of uh, making use of the uh, Node.js family of Paketo build packs. Um, this is an example of what different salsa levels are for a build process. Now, because KPAC focuses on the build, um, I just thought I'll highlight the build 
aspects of the salsa level. And so, as you can see, it's an incrementally growing number of best practices for how to design or how to architect your build environment. On uh, the lowest level, you have a undocumented um, script maybe that's doing a build. Um, but at the highest level, you have uh, a repeatable and what they call a hermetic parameterless build, which basically means your build is happening in an environment that is sufficiently isolated that only certain people have access to. And that build will succeed upon a two person review at the end of it. And so um, the other levels are, you know, somewhere between that kind of automation and sophistication and having nothing uh, at all. So it allows people to incrementally build a better um, build process for themselves. Um, this is the handshake of uh, the Cosign uh, or the Sigstore family of projects. To be honest, Cosign is at the center of it. Um, and then they have what are known as Fulcio and Recor, which are other projects that basically allow you to um, create a certifying authority and verifying that signature using Recor, which is a log. Uh, now, you can put this on any private infrastructure that you own and you can make sure that images that you publish go through a verification stage before their output. You Again, all of these projects are independent of KPAC itself. You can take the principles that are here and do it on your own. Um, doesn't have to be done in the context of KPAC. I am demonstrating it in the context of KPAC because it's just a more convenient way uh, to make it happen and KPAC has all of these advantages, other advantages that uh, it might make sense to um, make use of uh, or take advantage of as well. So like I mentioned four times I think now all of these are natively supported with KPAC um, and let's look at a quick demo. Now for this demo I have like I showed a kind cluster running on my laptop. Again not the most secure way to do things. Uh, but it's it's more for illustrative purposes. You could have your Kubernetes cluster run anywhere, and this demo and the principles contained within it are just as uh, portable and functional. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, KPAC sits in the heart of everything. Uh, it will take source code from a GitHub repo, create a container out of it using build packs, um, sign uh, that container, upload it to a Docker hub in a public Docker hub instance. And uh, what I've also, uh, what I'm also doing in the demo is showing a rebuild. So um, for one change that I make on GitHub, um, it will rebuild the containers, sign them once again, upload them once again, and verify them once again. So let's quickly walk through um, what that demo looks like. Um, so I just started this um, at the beginning. And um, so the first thing that I'm doing is creating a kind cluster, again, slightly outside the scope of this demo, but I just you know, wanted to invent the universe from scratch. Um, so what is happening here is KPAC is being applied. So KPAC as a resource is being applied to the Kubernetes cluster, and that will install KPAC um, on the cluster. So it will make use of that uh, service account uh, that I showed you. And that service account has two parts. Um, it has like regular uh, Docker Hub credentials and it also has um, cosine credentials. So it will have two parts to it. Um, I create uh, that as a Kubernetes secret and then uh, apply that to a service account here. Uh, once done, you can see that uh, the store and the stack and all of those pieces within uh, which which basically run KPAC, they're all being um, created here uh, within the resource. And once that's done, it will get into the first image build. Now, even that is a KPAC resource. Um, so let's see. So this is uh, what the image is being built. So the image basically consists of a URL. Um, that's a remote repository somewhere and a git revision number. So these are the two things that KPAC needs in order to trigger a build from that particular, um, for code for that particular repo. So if you've been paying attention and not sleeping after those wonderful snacks and lunch and what have you, um, you'll notice that this is where KPAC uh, triggers things off. Um, and then from here on forward, 
the build packs life cycle will kick in. So the first stage in the build packs life cycle is to detect the language um, of the code that's being used. Um, so it detected a Node.js application and it basically goes through this process of um, building uh, different layers on that application. Now, as it goes through building each and every layer, it will generate an SBOM for that particular layer. Paketo build packs will go through the whole life cycle. Um, like I said, they'll generate SBOM for each of the different participating layers. And finally, a container image is exported. Now, this is the name of the image. And before completing the export itself and uploading to Docker Hub, um, cosine will kick in and uh, it'll sign the image here and then push the image along with that signature. So, and then next, uh, I've, I've written uh, just a cosine verify step just to make sure that the image that we built was actually built by the ID that I've supplied. In this case, I'm just using my personal credentials. Um, and this is where a rebuild starts. So instead of this Git revision, we're now supplying a new Git revision in the same manner. And then KPAC will now detect that a change um, is occurring. And then it will go through the exact same steps, just that a lot of parts are just restored in this case. So both data and metadata uh, for the various images are restored. Um, and this kind of caching can give a lot of speed advantages if you're using KPAC. So it will go through the same process essentially, sign the build for a second time and verify the build for a second time. Um, we can check Docker Hub and we can notice that uh, it will have that signature file as part of as part of the uh, thing on Docker Hub. Um, so basically, it will have um, information about all of this. So along with uh, the different image layers, um, there's also like a signature layer here. Um, so this represents that signature, um, that cosine basically uploaded here. Finally, uh, the same image will also have all of the uh, as bombs. So if you want to know what's inside the image and what are the different uh, dependencies that are built and what are the licenses associated with these uh, dependencies and things like that, um, you can see them here. <laughs> If you uh, were in my previous talk, I sort of promised to show this uh, to folks. And so um, here's a way of knowing exactly what licenses each of the different dependencies um, in this uh, application have. So yeah, this is basically the trifecta of um, you know who's building the image, what's being built, um, and where it is being built. And so. All of that together can answer a lot of the supply chain security um, questions that uh, people might have. Um, again, KPAC is fully open source. It is a CNCF project. Um, you can check it out on GitHub um, uh, repos. Uh, obviously, the, um, the project needs as much love as it, is, as it can get. Um, they're all, the community is always looking out for contributors and maintainers. So if you're even remotely interested in an automated Kubernetes build service, I would highly recommend um, getting a leg on to KPAC. Uh, that being said, thank you for coming to my talk. I'm happy to take any questions uh, and feel free to connect on any social media. I'm Ram Iyengar in most places. Thank you so much.